As part of my Songs for Spring series, a great fun song to learn to play is I Can See Clearly Now by John Nash. It is an older but a classic tune that has a lot of interesting things to learn from, like how to incorporate a strum to match the rhythm of the song, and it uses an uncommon chord progression. I'll keep this tutorial beginner friendly, but there are a few tricky techniques needed for this song but I want to challenge you to level up your ukulele playing. So I'll play through the first verse to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all the obstacles in my way Gone all the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be So now we're going to dive into this song and learn how to do all these. So now we're going to learn the strum first and then the chords and then how to put it all together. So go grab your uke, tune it up, and I think we're going to uke. Now if you listen to the original recording by John Nash, you'll hear a strong downbeat on the second and the fourth beat of each measure. So it's like one, two, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. So we can produce that same rhythm using just the ukulele. This strum, it will follow a down, down, up, down, up pattern. And the count is one, two, we skip three, and four, and one, two, and four, and. If you're a beginner ukulele player, hopefully you're progressing in your playing, where I want to encourage you to learn a strum more in terms of a beat count, rather than simply learning just what's down, up, up, down, down, up. Because the beat count will actually capture the beat of the song. Where if you focus merely on what's down, up, up, down, style of learning strums, you can easily still be offbeat when you're learning a new song. So try to play along with this beat and try to count out loud. I find it really helpful when you count out loud while you're strumming because it really emphasizes the beat, helps you learn a lot faster. So let's start off with a D chord. So we're going to follow that count of one, two, we skip three, and four, and. So let's learn the strum. We'll start off just playing a D chord. Now if you remember a D chord is usually this way, but often you'll see me play it this way. It's the same 2nd, 3rd, and 4th string on the 2nd fret. But we're going to practice this count. So it's a downbeat on the 1, 2, and we skip 3, and then up on the AND, down on 4, and then back up on the AND. So all together it sounds kind of like this. Now, uh, if you learned in some of my other videos about the mute technique, it uses both your left and your right hand. To emphasize a mute, you're going to strum very quickly but soft with your right hand, just a quick down strum. And then with your left hand, you're going to lessen the pressure that you normally have to play a chord. So in case of a D chord, that's our normal D chord, but I'm going to, when I play the D chord, I'm going to kind of release about halfway of the pressure of a D chord, so it kind of gives that mute strum, so if you can hear it. But when we're strumming, you can kind of start to hear that kind of rhythm in the song, that kind of that swaying or rocking back and forth. So you try it a couple times, try to mute the first beat and then the AND before and after the four. So we're muting one, so it's a soft one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and one, two, and four, and. So if you want, go ahead and pause the video right now, practice it a few times, and then when you're ready to go on with the rest of the chords and the strumming, then just play along. So the easy chords are the D major, that one everybody should know, G major, the A major, and the C major. Tricky chords are the B minor, which it is a bar chord, but don't be scared. I'll show you a tricky way or a trick to kind of get around the B minor. It's a B minor and then a C sharp minor. Now a B minor, it is a bar chord, so 
you should be able to pinch pretty hard with your first finger and your thumb to play all the four strings and then you put your third finger on the fourth string on the fourth fret. If you do have trouble barring, a trick that I always um, teach is try to use the side of your finger because the side of your finger is, is pretty hard, that's the bony part, and that'll give you a nice even pressure and then just add that third finger. So, and if you're still having a tough time with those bar chords, you can do what I call a cheater B minor. It's where you put your first finger on the second string, second fret, your third finger on the third string, third fret, and your fourth finger on the fourth string, fourth fret. And try not to play that bottom A string. So that'll get you by in a pinch, like if you're not real comfortable with that B minor just yet. So, um, but practice. Alright, if you're comfortable playing with B minor, if you look at your hand position and the finger position for the B minor, we're going to keep our hand in the exact same position, but we're going to slide all our fingers down two frets. And there's actually our C sharp minor, right, because our B minor is here. If we were to slide down just one fret, that's a C minor. If we slide down one more, it's a C sharp minor. Okay. So for this particular song, you could also play a C minor this way, but I think this is a little bit harder than this. But if you can double bar your fingers, then go ahead and go for that. But we'll play a C sharp minor this way and a B minor this way. If you're still having trouble with the C sharp minor and a B minor, don't worry. You actually only have to play it one time in this song, in the bridge. Um, and so if you're still struggling, you can kind of just work your way through that line, and then the rest of the, the song is pretty easy. It's just a D, G, and an A. Alright, I'll leave the, the song sheet with the full chords and everything in the description box below. But now let's play through the first verse, and the chorus, and the bridge, and then you can practice verse 2 and verse 3. The thing I did forget to mention was that the chorus actually switches strums to a regular 4-4 four, four beat island strum, and then when the get back to the verse, it switches back to that 2-4 downbeat strum. Alright, so I'll play through verse 1, the chorus, and the bridge. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone all the dark clouds that verse 2. Actually, I'll play the last line of verse 2, the chorus, and then into the bridge, because the bridge is the part that has the tricky C sharp minor and the B minor. And I want to show you uh, a trick. Uh, I showed it in an earlier video about playing closed position for chords, because you have to play a C sharp minor, and then the next chord is a G major. But if you look at the notes that you're holding for a G major, you can play those exact same notes by, if you barred, the second fret, put your second finger on the second string, but the third fret, or the other uh, fret, and then your third finger on the fourth string on the fourth fret. If you play this, this is also a G major. Now, if you look at your finger shape, you can play a C sharp minor like this, slide your fingers up two frets, and all you have to do is put down that second finger, you're playing a G major, and then the very next chord, you have to slide back down to a C sharp minor. So it is a little bit tricky because you are playing bar chords the whole time, but I want to teach you it this way, because one, it looks cooler, but the more important part is that it's quicker to change from a C-sharp minor to a G major, back to a C-sharp minor, and then back to a G major again. So I'll show you this way. If that part is a little bit too tough, then just play your regular G. You can play a C-sharp minor, G, C-sharp minor, G. But if you find that chord change is a little bit too long or a little too tricky, then try, try this technique of using a closed chord position for a G. Because you can play your C sharp minor, G, C sharp minor, G. So you can switch back and forth pretty fast. Alright, so I'll play the last line of verse 2, the chorus and the bridge. Uh, and then that covers really all the parts of the song. And then you just put it all together and now you can play the song.
Here is the rainbow I've been praying for. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. Look all around, there's nothing but blue skies. Look straight ahead, there's nothing but blue skies. And then it starts right into verse three. So really those are the, the kind of the, all the tricky parts of the song, but when you put it all together, it sounds awesome. It sounds, uh, has that nice bouncy beat to the uh, original. So uh, if you want, I'll put a full play along song in an upcoming video. And if you like this tutorial, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you won't miss out on my upcoming video. All right, well, as always, have fun playing and God bless.